we had a leadership team thinking about a lot of operational things. And then my team working with our technology team and our ticketing team and a few others had to quickly pivot because one of the new things in our industry was essentially offering reservations. Um, we historically, as a, as a business, had not required people to tell us when they were coming uh, unless it was for a very specific event. And that was something that now we were going to need to limit capacity. We would need to know who was coming on which day. Um, and so we literally built a reservation system from scratch uh, during that hibernation period. That was probably one of the biggest ways that we pivoted, in addition to coming up with a lot of new operating procedures and policies. Um, so there's lots of different use cases that we're having to deal with, uh, but essentially we've ante anticipated what we can and all of them come back to the coronavirus thing is huge because the added benefits of the app because of it are so significant. It's not just, you know, standing next to near people or standing in line or putting things on a conveyor belt. It's even touching a, a self checkout screen. People don't want to touch that screen anymore because 15,000 other people have touched it that day or people don't want to touch a keypad to pay. They want it all to be completely no touch at all. There's an appreciation for knowing I can plan ahead make my reservation on a day and know that I have my spot reserved for that day. Uh, we're actually um, early on, you know, we thought we might have immediate capacity issues. We didn't necessarily have those. And so we, we somewhat pivoted to a little bit more of a reservations are encouraged, but not required because we weren't bumping up against capacity. Mm -hmm. We have found is as you know, we got through the summer and entered into the fall, um, something unique about our theme parks, maybe, uh, in comparison to other parks is we actually have a very, very robust fall and um, Christmas season. Um, we do some of our highest attendance during those two times. And so that's what we're actually seeing is uh, very recently we're, we're coming closer to uh, maximizing that attendance, uh, which makes those reservations even more important, but it also gives the peace of mind to the people that have made reservations that they don't necessarily have to worry about, am I going to get in? Um, now, you could choose to show up and roll the dice because we always have limited day of availability. But uh, I think a lot of guests are enjoying the fact that they can sort of um, guarantee, if you will, uh, that they're going to be able to get into the, the particular attraction on a given day. I think it, it's just like in, in, in our sector as well, Brian, that the, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird for people at first, but once they've done it once, mm -hmm. they can see the benefits if it's a good, slick system, and suddenly they'll use it time and time again because they see the good side of it and, and what it's all about. But getting people to do it for the first time is just that little bit of a hurdle, isn't it, basically, because it's something new and different. We actually recorded tutorial videos that walked someone through the process for different user groups and sort of showed them step by step exactly what they needed to do, which is not something that we had necessarily done before. And you can make a case that good user experience shouldn't require a tutorial video. Uh, <laughs> but we have a fairly diverse um, uh, set of guests that, that visit our properties. And so we felt like anything that we could do to additionally help them understand the process because it was so new and it was so recent um, and so many things in everyone's life had changed, right? How you, how you shop, how you... Um, uh, you know, do all kinds of things had changed. And so we felt like it was helpful and, and we think it worked out. We, we really did not have a lot of hiccups uh, rolling out the reservation program. Is that we have to be somehow, and this has been a real challenge, equally affordable for a small little sort of mom and pop store right through to a great big multinational store group with 10,000 stores. Um, and how do we do that? We do it by having a generic version of the app and a, a, a white label version of the app, but the same functionality for both. And then we just price it accordingly based on volume. I think for us, one of the things that, you know, may end up being a lasting change is, is sort of, I think we have accelerated um, some technology adoption at some of our properties. Um, you know, our mobile app, um, has been used for a long time, uh, particularly our big theme parks. Um, but one thing that we had to do as part of our, our changes is we eliminated any of our paper maps, paper show schedules, mm -hmm. uh, where we were not handing those out anymore uh, as one of our uh, operational changes. And so it put a little bit more pressure on the app for wayfinding, for uh, understanding when things, what, what activities are happen, happening during the day at a particular venue. Uh, we actually saw usage on the app go up 65 to 70% uh, year over year. 
um, as a percentage of attendance. We were already on a path to say, you know what, those guest experience technology improvements are important. We've got what I would consider to be a really nice roadmap going forward. I think this only uh, helps our case more. I don't know that it necessarily moves anything up the, the timeline because I think we were we had plans to be pretty aggressive in a lot of different areas to make some technology improvements, but this is definitely going to, no one's going to take the, the foot off the gas, if you will. You've got to find that one simple best user case reason for getting people to adopt the app. And I made a bit of a mistake at first by promoting the fact that we're the most sophisticated app and we do everything from loyalty to allergens to but, you know, tells you whether you whether it's got recyclable packaging, is it vegan friendly, you know, all these fancy things. And actually, the thing to focus on is payment. It's just one tap payment. And that, that that's the key. It's only one element of it, but it's such a key reason for using the app. All the magic shopping list stuff and everything. As soon as they've downloaded the app and use it once, that becomes great. But at first, it's sometimes too much to take in. So you have to have a really simple one basic reason to use it and then people discover all the other benefits and reasons so so things have accelerated and technology is the heart of, at the heart of everything and it's just made technology sort of the solution to all the problems and it's almost in a way sifted out all the technology for the sake of it which causes more problems because people don't have any time for that anymore so it's a bit like you know people have people have decided what's useful and what works um, and and there's a big opportunity there to, to once that's you know once COVID nineteen hopefully starts to disappear next year then all the good bits will stick and people will keep using the bits that have helped them and 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 you know that that make life easier.